when I was still working, after we completed a major project or dealt with a major issue, we always did a post-mortem of the events. Hi, I'm Ralph and welcome to Ages Runner. So that 50K is about a week behind me now as I've been reflecting on how it went, what went well, what didn't go well, and I thought I would share that with you. Over the years of my running and trial running, I've kind of done that informally. That's how I arrived at doing some of the things I do today. But I continue to look at all my long runs, all of my trial runs, and say, is there something I would do different, especially if issues develop? So I thought I would share a little bit of that with you today and give you an appreciation for what I did and maybe why I did it. And I'm going to kind of break this down into equipment and non-equipment. That's probably maybe, maybe the best two ways of looking at this. So let me start with equipment. If you saw my race video, if you haven't, I will queue it up at the end. You can take a look at it. You know, I just uh, sung the praises of my trekking poles. I started using those this year and they have been just wonderful. They keep me upright, especially on a muddy trail run like I did on Saturday. They're just wonderful. If you're, if you're a trail runner, regardless of your age and you're worried about falling, get some trekking poles. The only advice I would give you, do some research, the only advice I would give you is that there's an inverse relationship between price and weight. In other words, the, the lighter the trekking poles, the more they're going to cost. And I may do a, a video on my trekking poles. I have some uh, black diamond uh, trekking poles. I'll, I'll put a link down below if you want to look at what I use. Uh, they're by no means the most expensive, but they're not the cheapest either. Uh, but they are just wonderful. They kept me upright, kept me from falling. And since I've started using them, I've not taken a, a, a fall or a spill. So I highly recommend them if you're going to be trial running, and especially if you're an older runner, get some trekking poles. Now, if you watch some of my videos, you notice I use a running vest. So I use my running vest on all my long runs. If it's a short run, half hour, 45 minutes, I don't wear my running vest. But I do on any long run of any, any time. And the reason I use a running vest is it has pockets up front. Well, j just a minute, let, let, let me get it. So I have this running vest, and I got this all oh, maybe 18 months ago. This is the Osprey Duro 6. It's, I've got a review on it on my channel here. You can take a look at it. I'll try to put a link down below, but you can check it out. And the reason I use a running vest and the reason it works so great on these races is it has pockets up front where you can put gels or whatever you might want to put in there. Now there's two big pockets up here that you could put a water bottle and typically on long runs I do myself I don't use a water bottle I just use my hydration platter. But one thing I did different in this race which worked very well for me was I, I did also carry a water bottle in addition to my hydration bladder. The reason I did that I hate refilling my uh, hydration bladder during a race. It's cumbersome. You got to take, open it up, hold it open, where you're trying to refill it from from a, you know a, an urn or something. It's just real cumbersome and difficult. And I was trying to do that as few times as possible. So I thought with a water bottle, I could refill it at each aid station and only use my hydration pack should I run out of water in my water bottle. And that's exactly what it did. It worked beautifully. Uh, because this race ran around the perimeter trail uh, two laps, uh, and there were four aid stations, I had eight or nine opportunities uh, to refill my water bottle. And that worked very good. I would drink it. By the time I got to the aid station, it was pretty much empty, if not empty, and I would refill it up. And I never did have to refill my hydration bladder. So that worked very good for me, but I did use my hydration bladder, so I was glad I had it. Uh, but that worked very good for me. That was something I did different in this race that worked out wonderfully. So a water bottle with my hydration bladder gave me plenty of water. Didn't I have to refill that bladder at all? Now, as far as the other equipment, I wore my wool. I have a wool blend running shirt I use. It's very lightweight. I get it from a company called Icebreaker. Uh, the reason I like that shirt is when it gets wet, either from sweat or in case of Saturday rain, it doesn't cling to your body like polyester does. And I also had wool running socks. I think that helped a little bit with me not getting blisters like, like my daughter did. However, I did get a blister on one toe, and that brings up something I think I would do differently in the future, and that is put some kind of lubricant on my feet around my toes. I typically don't do that. And as interestingly at the race, at the race, they gave us a sample from a company called Trailtoes.com. It's actually called Trail, Trail Toes. It's actually a lubricant uh, meant for putting on your feet or other areas of my chafe. I'm going to try that next time I do a long run. I've not, I've not tried it, so I can't endorse it or not. Typically, what I'll use is Gold Bond Friction Defense. I'll put that on, you know, like my nipples or, you know, around in, in my inner thigh and things that I know might chafe. Uh, but I'm going to try something a little more heavy duty like that. 
And an interesting thing that happened to me during the race, because I think because it got wet and I had stuff in my running shorts pockets, I had my keys in one pocket, I had gels, and, and at a point in time I had my phone, because they were rubbing up and down my legs as I was running and they were wet, I actually got some chafing on my outer thighs. So I would probably use a little more friction defense or some other ointment on the outside of my thighs that might chafe from pockets running up and down. So definitely I'm going to add something to my feet next time I do a long run and maybe something to the outer part of my thighs. So that's one thing I would do differently. Now you also may have noticed in the video I had two Garmin items with me. I had my Garmin Forerunner, which I wore on my wrist. Then I had a Garmin InReach Mini, which I used up here. And you might ask, why two different items? What I do, what I do there? So. The Forerunner, the watch, the Forerunner 245 is an on-body device, meaning it's got like a heart rate sensor. It does things like give you heart rate. I can look at my watch at a glance. I know my heart rate. I know my average pace. I know my uh, current pace. I know how long I've been running and how far I've been running. I can tell that just by looking at my watch. And that's why I wear my watch and use the watch face that I do. I know exactly where I am in, in a run. So that works out very good. Now the other Garmin item I took was my InReach Mini. It is also a tracker. It's a satellite tracker like the watch. It uses a different satellite network. It uses the Iridium satellite network. But it has no on-body sensors. Even though I'm wearing it up here, it doesn't sense heart rate. It doesn't sense any of those things. But the big difference between it and my watch is you can communicate with it. You can actually send and receive text. And that's actually why I got it. I got it uh, because some of the places where I trail run, there's no cell service. And I want to stay in touch with my wife or somebody else. I can easily send and receive text no matter where I am. In fact, you, I took this to Colorado last year. and We were up in the Rockies. We weren't hiking. We were just walking around. And this thing, I brought it with me because I knew I could connect should an emergency happen and get, get help. In fact, this inReach has a little button on the side. It's called SOS. You can actually summon help through a service through Garmin to get rescue help if you need it. Now, another difference between the watch and the inReach Mini is this requires a subscription service. You have to pay to use this device. You want to use it for tracking, sending, receive messages. Now, it's not terribly expensive. You get the very basic plan. It's about 12 bucks a month if you buy a year in advance. So that's why I have two Garmin devices. I know when I'm out running, I can always text my wife with my inReach, let her know how I'm doing. Everything's going fine. So that's why I have two devices. These work very well for me. Now, I have found, I think, that the inReach is a little more accurate with mileage. I have a, a video on my channel I call GPS Test, where I tested the inReach, my Garmin, and, and my Galaxy Watch as far as how accurate I thought they were uh, in measuring mileage as I run. But So I carry this for safety reasons. So, so the Garmin inReach is more of a luxury item. I would not recommend you necessarily go out and get it unless you're concerned about your safety in remote areas. I would, however, recommend you get some kind of a running watch because you can get all kinds of viable data and statistics in that. So, so one last comment about the inReach. I said I only carry this when I trail run because I only want it for communication purposes where there's no cell, cell service. If I'm doing a long run around the neighborhood or on a bike trail where there's cell service, I don't bring this. It's not, it doesn't, it's not necessary. It doesn't uh, give me any, any value. So one little uh, discussion on equipment before I get away from that, and that is my shoes. I wore Saucony Exodus, and they work fine. They got a little more cushion than some of the other Saucony trail running shoes. Uh, but it, it, given the mud, if I had to do it over again, I might have wore trail gaiters because I think they would have kept some of the mud off my shoes, uh, made it a little easier to clean them up when I was all done. It, it wasn't a big deal, but my, my shoes were just covered in mud and gaiters would have protected at least the top side and the laces and those things like that. And the gaiters I could just could have, you know, hosed off and then thrown in the wash or something. Uh, so I might have, uh, and I'm going to look at maybe adding trail gaiters to my repertoire of equipment. So that's one equipment change I might do in the future for, again, for trail running. So let's kind of move on to non-equipment related items, and that is things I did to help keep me running, not get too fatigued too early. So as I talked about in my pre-race video, uh, you know, I maintain my hydration, maintain my energy. I typically tend to drink every 15 minutes when it's the summertime, when it's warm out. Wintertime, I might do every 20, but every 15 minutes, I will take some sips from my water bottle, my hydration pack. I typically use energy gels about every half hour because I get some uh, carbohydrates through my drink. I use like Tailwind or Heat or Scratch or something like that. Uh, now then, again, another advantage, I, I said it wouldn't be equipment, but I have one little equipment thing, and that's again the running vest allows me to store my energy gels, and I use I use Science and Sports Energy Gels. Those work very well for me. Again, something I've learned over the years, I used to use the more uh, hypertonic gels like Goo or something like that, and they would sometimes upset my stomach because I wouldn't get enough water when I take them. When you take those really thick gels, if you don't get enough water, uh, 
uh, they'll sit in your stomach and, and upset it. Uh, but these science and sports gels are isotonic. Uh, you don't even need to drink water because they got enough moisture in them. Uh, so that uh, isotonic means the concentration of the materials in them are about the same as your body, so it won't upset your stomach. Now, the downside of these things is you can see they're, they're kind of big. And again, I have a review of these on my on my channel if you want to look for that. Uh, so all everything about my nutrition, hydration worked very well for me. I did not get fatigued, did not have that issue at all. Now, my strategy was to try and keep my heart rate below uh, the 80%, make sure I ran aerobic, and that worked okay because, well, we walked a lot of the second half because it caused the mud, and of course, Christy developed her, her blister problem, and I, did, I didn't want to leave her. Uh, so that all worked fine. I really did not spend hardly any time up above the 80% of my heart zone, right zone, so that worked very good. So another thing I would do differently if I were doing this race again, or, or let me put it this way, next, what I'm going to do differently before I do my next really long race is get to the gym and start doing strength training. That's really important for, for running, and I've been very remiss in that. Uh, I think it would help my stamina, it would help my endurance, and I haven't been doing that. So that's something I would do differently, and I will do differently going forward, uh, is add strength training into my preparation for some of these really long runs or long races. Maybe not a 30-mile race, but even doing a half marathon, doing strength training can help you, help you get through it and be less tired and, and finish stronger than without strength training. So that's another change I would make. So I think that about covers my post-mortem of the race. I hope you enjoyed the race video. Again, I'll queue it up here and, and at the end of this video. Uh, it was a great, great experience. And I hope you learned a little something from my uh, debrief here. Hopefully that gave you some ideas of some things that I do. What I've learned might help you in, in some of your running and your races. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you like this video, please scroll down and hit that like icon. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you stick around. Hit that subscribe icon while you're there. Uh, again, thanks for watching and happy running.